If we eliminate corporate income tax, currently corporate income tax brings in a very small percentage of Missouri's income. It is a huge burden to the Department of Revenue. The Department of Revenue will tell you that there is minimal net gain to the state because of their collection efforts, the money they expend to collect it, and the benefits that it brings to the state. It also is a huge burden to businesses for them to track this, provide the accounting, because we are decoupled from the Fed, so it's not exactly the same. They do have to track it separately. If we were to phase out corporate income tax, it would position Missouri very beneficially to be a magnet for businesses to locate their headquarters here in the state of Missouri. Now, their opponents fall into two categories, one of which says that corporations are not taxed enough, that we are already at the bottom 48th, I think, in the nation as far as corporate income tax, um, and therefore we should be raising the corporate income tax, not facing it out. That's a philosophical difference, and I understand that. The second uh, category that opposes my bill opposes it for an entirely different reason. Their argument against my bill is that we have this network of tax credits that gives them an economic advantage by giving them a special interest tax credit. If we eliminate corporate income tax, we basically make a lot of those tax credits unusable because there is then no market for those tax credits. And their argument is that their special interest should stand in the way of good overall broad tax policy. The tax credit system was created to sort of provide for a capital investment opportunity in places maybe where it wasn't happening um, and encourage that upfront investment. Um, so it's not just avoidance of taxes for those companies that are really using those. It really provides upfront capital because they're able to sell those and provide immediate uh, capital for their project, development project per se. And I realize you may not agree with that, but the, res the reality is constitutionally we're prohibited from sort of incentivizing by giving money to right. projects like that directly. So I, I guess my question is, what approach do you recommend if we are uh, serious about making investment in places where um, you know we've had trouble? Um, frankly, the marketplace has been difficult by itself, and that you know some of these programs have begun to at least encourage investment uh, from other folks in the private sector. Um, your your proposal essentially eliminates sort of that strategy, if you will, um, because the individual marketplace, I would argue, for these credits is way different than you know the demand corporate for those. Um, so, what would you propose, sort of, as an alternative strategy to accomplish some of those same goals that I suspect we both share? Oh, well, Representative, I think you put your finger exactly on the issue. I philosophically have some problems with the government picking winners and losers, and I am somewhat uncomfortable with the fact that we find ourselves constantly incentivizing businesses to do particular activities, and I'm not entirely sure that it is the state's role to be doing that. I know we do, I vote for it every year, but that doesn't mean I'm comfortable with it. And I really believe that better policy would be for us to simply eliminate the corporate income tax, level the playing field, open up the marketplace, and create an equal incentive for everyone across the marketplace as opposed to picking winners and losers. In relation to, thank you, in relation to the second issue, I, I think people quibble over the numbers where we rate on corporate tax burden, but, but no one I would suspect um, would argue that it's a high corporate tax burden in the state of Missouri. Right. And um, at what point do we hit a threshold where suddenly, going from 48th to 50th, if you will, that corporations come running in? It just seems like if, if the strategy is using tax policy as a way simply to attract corporations into the state, that we would be there by now. Well, uh, <coughs> Representative, I agree the argument is not reduced tax burden is going to draw them in. My argument is that because of the high level of tax credits, we already see minimal amounts of revenue come in from this tax. But I, what, what, I am, what I am suggesting is that we eliminate their headache so they don't have to track it and don't have to mess with it. And we eliminate the burden on the Department of Revenue and the reduced administrative 
headache to those corporations is what's going to draw them in, not the reduction in tax burden, which they can already offset with tax credits. What is more difficult about tracking corporate tax income versus individual? They're both a headache. Why don't we get rid of individual? Well, I, I'm sure we could talk about that too, Representative, but that's not this particular bill. Is it about $300 million? Uh, my latest figures were it was around $300 million. I mean, I realize it's a small percentage of a large budget, but still, obviously, a significant $300 million is a significant part of the budget by any stretch, at least. On $300 board. million is a lot in my district, yes. Yeah. Um, one of the things that Senator Gibbons uh, wanted us to start to work on in, in this committee is wanted us to start some discussion around the tax policy in our state and from a broad, broad-based implication. And, and is it time or have we evolved to the point where we need to be talking about things like Senator or like Representative Stevenson bringing up and some of the other proposals that are out there? Uh, is it time to start having a discussion about is there a, a time and a place and a way for us to phase out the, the individual income tax. Yeah, I think that those are the kinds of discussions that as we move forward with this committee over the next uh, nine months and, and, and beyond to be candid, um, I think those are the types of things that we need to start talking about, a broad-based, overarching uh, tax policy for our state. The uh, earnings tax has, has become a, a large source of revenue for uh, both Kansas City and, 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 and St. Louis. And, to be very candid, I I view the uh, earnings tax to two, those two large areas much like crack cocaine to a drug addict. It's become such a such a uh, reliant piece of their budget. It's very challenging. In St. Louis, I think it's a little over forty percent. In Kansas City, almost forty six percent of the city's revenue. And to put it into in the perspective of of what we're really dealing with, the Kansas City Chamber, which is a a business. Uh, organization to help that's there to advocate on behalf of businesses the Kansas City Chamber has a policy position to oppose the elimination of the earnings tax and that is that is the challenge that's, that's before us and the reason they're the reason they have that position is it is 46 percent of the city's revenue and, and their fear is is what happens uh, if that goes away I'm here today to talk to you about uh, Senate Bill 1256 and and we'll talk specifically about the bill, and I want to talk a little bit about the earnings tax and kind of get the flavor of the committee on, on where you want to go. Uh, Senate Bill 1256 it essentially says that, um, that by 2013, that each of these communities that have an earnings tax will, will have a plan to, to begin phasing it out, and that it will be phased out by, by 2018. So essentially 10 years from, from, from now, um, our, our goal in, the, in, the, in my theory is, is not to tell them what they have to do or how they have to do it. My, my, my belief is, is that we need to begin to put a policy in place that allows them to start working on it.